What's going on everybody? My name is Andrew Yalo and today I'm ranking and breaking down the most iconic first boots in Survivor USA. Before we get into today's video, make sure to stay subscribed for more content, hit that like button and join the Discord server down below. Some rules before we get into the countdown are as follows. Number one, I'm not including any players who returned to the game and were booted on their second or third time playing. This list will only include players who on their first time playing were voted out first. And rule number two, we unfortunately aren't going to be including any players who were medevaced. So with that being said, these are all people who were eliminated first, not due to any medical issues. Starting our list off at number 10, we have the first boot of the second season of Survivor, the Australian Outback. Deb Eaton, 45 from New Hampshire, was a corrections officer who right off the bat was a very vocal leader on the tribe, trying to convince everyone that they should build their entire shelter out of, well, you know. We got enough rocks here too, we could build a pretty decent shelter just using rocks. Deb was on the Kucha tribe and became the first of many victims of Jeff Varner and Michael Scoopin in Survivor and in real life combined. I guess Scoopin has never been a fan of the law after all. The tribe has spoken. At number 9 we have Jonathan and Wanda from Survivor Palau. These two are some of the most robbed contestants of all time. Never getting to experience what it was truly like to be a part of the show, these two were purged out of the game before the game really even started. Their elimination felt very wrong. I remember sitting there watching this episode not even being able to imagine what these two were thinking in this moment after going through such an extensive process getting on the show. I'm glad Survivor never did this again because in all honesty it just looked like the producers had a tough time picking 18 castaways, so they let the cast decide instead on who deserved to play. Have a good one guys! Bye! Bye. Number 8 on our list is gonna go to Steve Chicken Morris. Chicken was from Survivor China, not only just being memorable because of his name, but Chicken is most infamously known for not getting along with his tribe at the very beginning, but also for his unprecedented reaction at Tribal when he was voted out. First person voted out of Survivor China. Chicken. Damn! When you come to think of it, in reality, we had a 1 in 16 chance of getting a Survivor winner named Chicken, and that truly would have been legendary. Chicken? Tribe spoken. I heard him. At number 7, we have Maddie from Survivor 44. Some of you may not understand why she's on my list at all, but I have good reason for it. Pre-season on Twitter and social media, fans pegged Maddie going deep into the game after seeing her Kim Spradlin-like cast photo. It was no doubt she would go deep into the game, right? Well, thank Brandon for this insane first tribal council. Maddie was voted off with one single vote and had so many advantages and twists not been introduced this early into the game, Maddie could have gone deep and ran with the season. In my opinion, she's a standout first boot because of how tragic her downfall was and how little she could do to stop it. Maddie, try to spoke. At number six, we have Wendy Jo from Survivor Nicaragua. Now, we all know Nicaragua had one of the most strange casts of all time. However, Wendy Jo takes the cake and represents all of the oddballs on this season to a T. She has every first boot trait and characteristic you would need to be targeted on day one. Socially awkward, not physically helpful in challenges, and not a strategic bone in her body. She was aligned with Holly, who at this point was still mentally insane and didn't have her Jimmy Johnson epiphany, so Wendy was on the bottom from the get-go. At Tribal Council, she went on a really strange ramble about how she didn't have blisters on her feet and the reactions of her tribe made say it all. Wendy, the tribe has spoken. Coming in at number 5, we have Zane Knight. On Survivor Philippines, Zane seemed to have been the most strategic and the most Hans-esque of the tribe. He created alliances with everyone on his tribe, solidifying himself into a decent spot this early in the game. But after Matt Singh lost their first immunity challenge, Zane tried to pull the most insane reverse psychology move on his tribe, but no one else was willing to sacrifice their own game, and Zane unfortunately took the fall, which ultimately led to Denise and Malcolm running away with this season. Zane, tribe spoken. At number 4 we have a fresh face amongst the group and it's David Jelinski. Being the most recent boot and survivor as of recording this video, his boot was among those that I can't fully wrap my head around. There were several first boots and several people that have done stupid moves in the past, but Jelinski is one of a kind. He came into this game wanting to play like the greatest survivor players of all time, hence why he went by his last name. Similar to the likeness of Cochran, Penner, Mariano, Wentworth, Fishback, Lacina, oh yeah, Varner and Scoopin as well. However, 
Jolinski let his tribe down on the marooning challenge. He threw in his towel on the sweat task. He literally folded at the summit challenge, giving the other two tribes an extra vote. He failed the puzzle at the immunity challenge. And this guy was still convinced that he wasn't going home, even at tribal. You can't make this up. This was a huge blind side. I thought with every ounce in my body that Jess was going home tonight. At number three, we have the first ever first boot. And this is Sonya from Survivor Borneo. You can't count Sonya as a bad player because the game was just getting formed as they went. However, Sonya's attitude and spirit truly lit up the faces of the other people in the cast with her music. Having one of the most genuine spirits and living life to the fullest didn't stop Sonya from continuously stumbling and falling during the immunity challenge on day two, causing her tribe to lose and be sent to the first tribal council in Survivor history. Sonya was not only a survivor on the show, but a survivor in real life after just beating cancer before she decided to play the game. The tribe has spoken. At number two, we have Reem from Survivor 38 Edge of Extinction. Reem came into the game very confrontational and bossy. She took a liking to Wendy, but that alone wasn't enough to stop David Wright from targeting her. Their tribe didn't want a motherly figure around and she was voted out. However, this wasn't the end for Reem. She had the option to live on the Edge of Extinction in hopes for a chance to return to the game, similar to the format of Redemption Island. Despite getting voted out on night 3, she lasted a total of 35 days in the game, the most of any first boot in Survivor history. I've never been so cold, so alone, so miserable, and that was probably my darkest moment. Before we get to our number one pick, I'd like to list off a few honorable mentions. We have Marisa from Survivor Samoa, Natalie and Nadia Anderson for both getting first boot despite Natalie being a former winner. I think that's just insane how that happened. Carolina from Survivor Token Cheens and Michelle from Survivor Gabon. Now at the top of our list, I have the most iconic first boot of all time. Quite possibly the most iconic player of all time. And that's Hannah from Survivor 45. And yes, of course I'm kidding. The real most iconic first boot is Francesca from Survivor Redemption Island and Survivor Caramoan. In Redemption Island, Francesca had a comical feud and falling out with the notorious Philip Shepard. The two of them started out as allies and were relying on each other. However, Philip being a double agent caused all of Francesca's cards to be shown on the table when he leaked everything to Boss and Rob and his growing alliance. At the first tribal council, Rob's alliance was able to blindside Francesca, causing her to be the first boot of that season. However, that's not where her story ends. Francesca would then come back to play in Survivor Caramoan Fans vs Favorites 2. On this season, she ended up being on the Favorites tribe with her rival, Philip Special Agent Shepard. After trying to lead a charge against Philip for a second time and coming out of the gate too strong strategically, Francesca had to face the music again and became the only person in the series to be voted out first twice. Francesca, the tribe has spoken. Again. <laughs> Let me know if you agree with my list. I would love to hear your opinions in the comments of this video. If you're a subscriber of my YouTube channel or just seeing my videos for the first time, I have a new series coming out soon called Minecraft Survivor Eternal Oasis, where we play Survivor in Minecraft, and it's hosted by yours truly. Thanks for watching, and I will see you guys in the next one.